<clears throat> Fuck. Yeah, okay, here we go. <sighs> New World is an MMO RPG with immersive combat, engaging in tiered crafting, literal shitloads of PvP potential, and some neat dungeon encounters. Before it closed on August 2nd, I put in almost 100 hours into the New World beta. During this time, I was looking for an MMO, or any game really, to fill the vacuous void of my poor soul. <sighs> hey y'all, no sit in here. So that's how you say it. You can call me Sid, or City. I've played MMO since I had dial-up. You know, the internet thing where us 20 to 30 somethings can say, back in my day. I remember my cousin introducing me to RuneScape, and boy did I have a blast. And by that, I mean I had no idea what I was doing. Just like my World of Warcraft experience. Seems like things never change. What? Oh, right, New World. While experiencing Aeternum, that's the name of this new land, by the way, we, as the savage and barbaric champions we are, begin to destroy, collect, and craft with everything in our immediate vicinity. You know, MMO stuff as usual. Commit mass murder and use their shit. I mean, unless you're walking somewhere and ignore that urge to drift from your path, how do you do that? Don't get me wrong, I actually enjoy the walking. I mean, look at the trees, and the rocks, and the sun rays. The world always has something to pull you in. Some animals to skin, some iron ore no one is near, or that stupid syndicate player hiding in a bush waiting to gank you. Screw you, dude. While there is a fast travel mechanic, it requires a consumable called Azoth that isn't that hard to get, or at least that's what people tell you without knowing that I spent literally all of my Azoth to travel back and forth with the full inventory before I found out. <clears throat> The fast travel consumable uses a few factors in its cost. The first of these is distance. I don't quite know the exact cost per distance. I also think this is something that changes, but it's safe to say it's not that much. Then it adds your inventory weight. If you're carrying a lot of chonk on you, that price going up. This makes fast traveling to bank your resources in different settlements a little bit more like the one chore you put off until you begrudgingly leave your computer chair for the first time in a week to do it public service announcement, you should probably dust and take out the trash. Acquiring the glorious portaling juice isn't that difficult. Kill some mobs, complete some quests, maybe run an expedition. That means dungeon in this game. Just don't use it like it's infinite. Well, it is, but don't look at it that way. I did that and had to walk everywhere for a solid two levels. Look at it like, how many of the same enemy designs do I want to kill to stock back up? That's probably going to happen if you don't have any more quests. Many of the mobs had the same design. Now, of course, I wasn't noticing this right away. It was new. It's a new world. It wasn't until I got to the first expedition, Amrine, that I began to notice. By the way, I have two videos on Amrine you can check out. One of them is a fail that uh, we kind of got beat by the server boss. And the second one's a success, or I should say, quote unquote, success. In the dungeon, expedition, fucking whatever you want to call it, most of the designs were the same. Zombie, gargoyle looking bitch, ghosts, and Mr. Chad Crown. Sometimes we may get a new color. Ooh. While I do love the designs of the enemies, a couple more would be nice. However, in Weaver's Fen, one of the territories in the game, I did meet a bear with a different color and different mechanics. The bear stood on his hind legs and was partially green. I was in awe. Never have I been so frightened, yet so excited at the same time in a game. Long story short, needs a couple more designs. Overall, not bad. Now, I want to keep this video a little brief. It's beta. I'm just throwing things out there that I noticed. This isn't a game guide, more or less just me thinking out loud. Like thinking about combat. Strength builds are almost busted. There, I said it. And I used one for almost all of the beta. Some of the abilities, the damage potential, and general evasiveness of strength builds are insane. The hatchet has berserk, granting movement speed, damage increase, and one of their ultimates in a tree can negate death. Great Axe was bugged for all of beta, and I used that shit to clear content solo like I just used Game Shark on my PS2. There was a wondrous little passive ability in the Mauler tree, first tier by the way, called Heavy Pull. Simple enough, it reads, heavy attacks with great axe pull foes closer to you. 
Now from my dumbass perspective, I thought this just sounded good. Spam heavies. It's what I wanted to do anyway. A lot of health, a lot of damage. No, but no mobility necessary. Literally like a tank in real life. The idiot's plan. It is foolproof. Well, I got what I wanted and some. I had health, a lot of damage, and mobility with the Great Axe charge. This passive ability though, Heavy Pull, literally busted one of your heavy attacks, causing it to strike twice. Let me explain. The Great Axe swings twice in a chain. Once to the left, then once to the right. Be them heavy or light attacks, in any order, the attack chain always has two strikes. Swing left, then swing right. What this passive did was, on your second attack in the chain, if it was a heavy attack, it would hit the target twice. So, essentially, in one attack chain of two strikes, you hit the enemy three times. Now that's a lot of damage. If lucky, I could half health a mob four levels above me with one heavy attack. Busted, but fun as fuck. Needless to say, strength builds like Hatchet and Great Axe have some <coughs> nerfs incoming. At least that's how I see it. I'm not a lord by magic much. I've played casters through most of my MMO experience. It's time for some strength, dexterity, and some chonk. However, I do see magic users doing huge AoE damage later in the game. Some trusted source, or a bird in a distant tree, or maybe it was a marauder in a distant tree. Regardless, he told me that magic damage ramps up exponentially when you level the weapon mastery. Meh, too much work. I'll just keep dying to them till I figure out their strats. Which, by the way, is something I love about this game. New World, at least in the beta, had a strong rock, paper, scissors aspect going on in my mind. While I was beasting people with my Great Axe and Warhammer build, there were some I just couldn't beat. Magic wielders absolutely destroyed me. Don't get me wrong, if I caught them, they would shred like paper. There's a big if there. Using light armor, you get a dodge roll instead of the small little bunny hop you get with heavy armor. Oof for us heavy armor users. So, theoretically, magic users could indefinitely kite strength melee users. However, mages don't always do the best against ranged weapons, like the musket. I have seen and performed godly crits with the musket to the shining dome of a maid. Hitting a light armor user with a clean musket shot is the closest thing to euphoric I've felt in years. One, the musket sound is just orgasmic. Two, the damage numbers that show up and seeing the enemy's health bar just plummet down is better than a Chalupa Supreme from Taco Bell. Just barely better. The rock, paper, scissors aspect of New World is as follows. Melee users, especially strength users, can fuck up everyone if they can hit. Otherwise, mages will kite them. Mages, though, cannot kite a musket or bow easily. Last, musket and bow users don't have the mobility to escape the champion's flailing murder weapons as they charge. Range beats magic, magic beats melee, melee beats range. Good? Good. Of course, skill is involved, and there will be neat builds that break these roles. For example, Heavy Armor Healer with the Life Staff and Sword and Shield. Can't out damage the eels now, bitch! The wars in this game are absolutely chaotic. That makes them absolutely gorgeous to me. I swear, getting two teams of 50 gamers together and on the same wavelength is like trying to herd cats. Yet, if it happens, the war is a literal bloodbath. You have a sea of red diamond squared things every- any of my markers. Those are the words. You have siege turrets firing at you for half your health. You have mines that shred through the health of a whole group of enemies if one dumbass decides to step on it. Me. I'm the dumbass. Just a beautiful place. I didn't get the opportunity to do outpost rushes. From what I understand, it's a type of king of the hill where the team with the most points wins. More PvP! All in all, this game has a plethora of gameplay options. I didn't even get into the crafting, mostly because I didn't do that much of it. For the beta, I wanted more action than progression. Now, what are some things I didn't enjoy? Of course, there has to be something. First, that which I love is also that which I hate. The community. I'm not saying the community is horrible. I'm saying the community is a bunch of things. One of them includes being horrible. I have met many friends and have experienced many memorable moments in the two weeks of beta. But did you know it is common as a PvP player to call other players pussies if they aren't flagged for PvP 24-7? Some players believe that this opinion is divine. 
quite a few times I've been stopped while walking through the world to be questioned by these what I like to call gate worlders. Whatever they do, people must view the game the way they do, or they'll shit talk them. Maybe even in global chat, I can't count on one hand how many times someone said to me, this game is bad without PvP on. Whenever I try to respond that people can enjoy the game in different ways and that having PvP on for them may be fun, but for others it is draining and time consuming, the response is usually, no, the game is factually boring without PvP, it's just true. This is a behavior that you immediately avoid. No one wants to hear someone talking about how a game is so bad that you have to play it to tell people. Or how I go on Twitter and see people saying the game is bad as well. Sometimes I wonder if the people saying that even played the game. It's sad we have to share this new world, Eternum, with these gate rollers. But that's an MMO. They will always appear to tell you how you should play the game or you're bad. In the end, the amount of good experiences I've had with people far outweighs these gate rollers. The second thing that makes me worry is content. Now hold up! You may think I just said this game doesn't have enough content. That is not what I said. What I said was that the content makes me worry. I don't know if they have enough content. In two weeks, I wasn't able to get to endgame. Is that enough content? Many say it's a PvP focused game, which makes sense. Open world PvP, forts, outposts, rushes, wars. There are many options for PvP, but what about PvE? Expeditions are great. The first two or three aren't that difficult. The one in Restless Shores though, ugh. That boss is a pain in the dick. You also have open world elite areas. Not hard, honestly, but it's not that hard of a game. I don't know where the end game content will lead. Will it merely be expeditions to be farmed for materials? Will there be raids or bigger PvE content? I heard of something called The Wall with elite mobs on the other side. Supposedly you need a decent sized group for it, but I haven't been there. So at this point, to me, it's all rumors. Not just raids and dungeons, but I also worry about weapons. In beta, I thought there was a good spread of weapons. Yet, people complain they see the same weapons in the wild. Great axe, hatchet, fire ice magic. While I don't feel the same as these individuals, I do believe more weapons will be necessary. I hope they do well with them. Whatever they choose, it probably needs more DACA. All in all, New World has been the holy spark I've been looking for. Of course, it isn't perfect, and it was beta, but the release is close, even though they did just postpone it to September 28th. We should all be wary of the potential dumpster fire that Amazon could create. However, we should also be prepared for a decently polished MMO hitting the market for us all to explore. When have you heard of a perfect MMO anyway? I know I needed a new world, and you'll find me, well, in the new world. Thanks for watching. And have a holy time. By the way, did I mention you should convert to our divine saviors the covenant?